Cool. Good. Thank you so much for joining us. I know it's late in the afternoon, but we appreciate you being here. My name is Winnie. I'm a PM on the Visual Studio App Center team. I primarily focus on our diagnostics tooling and also our end-to-end -end Windows story. And my name is Daniel. I'm a PM lead on uh, the Visual Studio team, specifically focused on tools for Windows application developers and all the XAML development tooling you see if you build WPF or UWP applications. Cool. So today we'll be talking about how you can supercharge your desktop app with Azure DevOps and App Center. Um, my clicker is working. Cool. So we'll start off with a brief introduction as to why DevOps practices are even important. Um, we'll go into a little bit of history about what is App Center, what can you do in App Center, and then we'll demo how you can set up an automatic build, release, and monitoring pipeline under 10 minutes. Very easy. Uh, finally, we'll conclude with some resources to help you all get started and also review some uh, related sessions so you can check those out throughout the rest of the week. So as we all know, we all live in a world where people are expecting technology to just work, right? Our users are having higher expectations. Um, they expect the app to be performant, to be interesting, to be engaging, to solve a problem, and just work. We don't want the apps to crash. And nowadays, there are so many apps out there in the marketplace, it's really easy for a user to just uninstall your app and just switch over to competitors. So what that means is it's really, really important for teams to deliver continuous value. And so with that, there's been a lot of research as to you know, companies and teams who have adopted these practices. Um, research has shown that they ship more frequently, they can find bugs quicker, they can ship those fixes, ship new features, get a lot of feedback, ultimately leading to a better user experience, happier customers, um, a better business for, for you. And so with Azure DevOps and App Center, we'll be going over the cycle of continuously building, releasing, and monitoring. And for those of you who aren't familiar with App Center, App Center is a unified service uh, that aims to help app developers build better apps. So you'll see on the left side of the screen a bunch of different Microsoft services that aim to help with different aspects of the development lifecycle. But App Center is really trying to streamline all of those services into one product. So if you're building a mobile app, a desktop app, you can manage all of these different things in one product so you can focus on building your app instead of working on all these different manual processes and integrating with different tools. And so today, App Center supports, a various, uh, supports a number of services. Today, we'll be demoing the distribution, diagnostics, and analytics service. If you're building a UWP app, you can also use App Center to build and send push notifications. But for this demo, we'll be showing you how to use Azure Pipelines to kick off a build for your WPF app. And Azure Pipelines is a very, very powerful tool. You can do a lot with it. And it also integrates very well with App Center. So you can kick off your build in Azure Pipelines and then release to App Center and then use the App Center SDK to monitor your app analytics and app diagnostics. So once your app is in the wild, you actually know how it's behaving. So I'm going to pass it off to Daniel. He'll be going over some of the um, recommendations in our demo. Cool. So the majority of the remainder of this presentation is just going to be focused on the demo. We're going to show you how you can build a end-to-end -end continuous integration and deployment solution with Azure DevOps and App Center for a .NET Core WPF application. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about some of the things you're about to see. Um, and so in terms of how we recommend doing our branching strategies, a lot of what we do at Microsoft is we have really small and short-lived feature or bug fix product branches that eventually merge to either a, a stable, um, shippable release branch or even all the way to master. And so for this demo, we're going to be effectively base everything off of master. In addition, we're using the, the new .NET Core technology that allows you to publish a fully self-contained executable. So all of the .NET runtime dependencies are contained within the application itself. Typically, for Windows applications, we recommend deploying and packaging with MSIX. You'll get enhanced features such as automatic background updates, Delta package install, uh, installation, and things like that. We'll point you to more sessions about that later. We just only have 20 minutes, so not quite enough time to do all of that stuff. And last but not least, we're going to be using an awesome tool that makes versioning really simple. There's a, a tool called NerdBank Git Versioning, which allows you to adhere to semantic versioning standards while also essentially stamping in Git commit identity data inside of the version itself. Um, and so you can essentially map that release of your product to which git commit created it. So it's pretty cool stuff. And with that, let's get into the demo. I need to switch here. Uh, so for the demo, we've got a really simple application. It's just a calculator. It's a WPF application targeting .NET Core. Uh, and the way we're going to deploy it is going to be fully self-contained. Uh, but you can do things you would expect, like 2 plus 2. 
However, when you try to do something that is not supported, the application does not uh, respond properly. So you can see it crashes. Unfortunately, this application does not have App Center analytics yet, so if my users are encountering this issue, I don't know how impactful it actually is. I don't know how many people are hitting it, how frequently this is causing their application to crash, or anything else. And so what we're going to do is we're going to actually add the App Center SDK right now. It's, it's really simple. Um, when you create a new WPF application in the App Center portal, this is the screen you will get. So this is just the default screen. And it'll guide you through adding App Center. And so it's really just a three-step process. You add the NuGet package references that you need to get the SDK. You add in the using statements and then a single line of code. And then you get a bunch of data just from that. And so that's what we're going to do. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and commit and sync this code to my repository, which already has build and distribute set up. And then we'll walk through all the steps that it's going to do. So I'll call this adding app center. And so once this finishes syncing, which it looks like it's done, oops, still going. Um, so we're actually going to start on the GitHub repository for this. And if you want to find it, you can find it at um, the uh, aka.ms slash this theater session. So THR2307 will take you straight to this GitHub repo, which has links to everything else. So everything you see can essentially start here. Uh, but what we're going to start with is you can see I have my CI status badge directly in my repository. And I can click that and go directly to the, the most recent successful build. All of this is public. I don't need to be signed in to do this. So you can go do this right now. This is a public Azure DevOps project, uh, much like an open source project on GitHub. But all of my build and release pipeline information is here. For anyone to go see and download the artifacts and look at the logs, everything is open. Um, so you can see when I created a build and I committed, it kicked off a build in my Azure DevOps build pipeline. And let's take a look at the build definition so we can understand exactly what this machine is going to do so you can recreate this later. All it is is 40 lines of this YAML file, which is the, the build definition. So it's really not doing all that much. It's, it's simple to get started. And the way it's going to work is it's going to trigger off of any changes to the master branch of my Git repository, whether it's a pull request or a direct commit. It's then going to pick a VM so it's, it's a virtual hosted build agent uh, picking from the latest Windows machine available in the Azure DevOps VM pool. And then I'm going to specify some variables for the rest of the build. The one that's a little interesting that I encourage you to do, especially for hosted build agents, is this .NET skip first time experience variable, which will essentially skip any .NET SDK caching on the build agent. And because it's a hosted build agent that gets immediately discarded after the build completes, Caching is, is pointless, and it slows down the build. If you were doing this on a local machine, you would not want to run this. And then the rest of the build is really just all the .NET SDK stuff. So the first one is actually downloading and installing the right version of the SDK that my application depends on. And this is way more powerful than you might think, because a lot of times when you're working with hosted infrastructure that's beyond your control, you cannot specify exact dependencies that are installed on that machine. So for example, say you want to use the latest .NET Core SDK preview for some new feature. You might have to wait for the hosted build agent to update, which could take a long time. With this, you just install it whenever you want, whenever you need it. You can get the right version. The next thing we're going to do is uh, use the .NET publish command. And the thing that's really interesting here and kind of the, the right way to deploy desktop applications is to specify this publish profile. And so basically, this makes it really easy to create multiple channels, multiple different types of releases, depending on where you need it to run, based off of a definition file. So if I go back to my code, I can see all of this is source-centric information for how my application gets published. And I'm just specifying folder profile as my publishing profile. Some things to call out here is that we're compiling for the Windows x86 runtime. And it is going to be self-contained. So all of the .NET Core dependencies will be packaged as a part of the application. And we're going to publish it as a single file. So basically, we'll get a single exe output, is what that means. That'll run on any Windows 7 or higher machine. It'll just work. No .NET dependencies needed. Um, last but not least, we're going to specify and set the versions. So we're getting this uh, .NET CLI tool called NerdBank Git Versioning, which will allow me to essentially stamp the version of my application into the Azure DevOps build, so that when I release it, all of the versioning is matching from end to end, basically. And then last but not least, we'll publish it to our artifact staging directory, where we'll get staged for release. So now if I go to releases, you can see this one just finished. It's the 1.0.12 build, which just completed. It's already done before I can finish explaining it. That's how quick it is. Um, but then now I've got this uh, build artifact staged. So there's where my artifacts get deployed. And I can build a release task off of that. 
which only has two steps. It's really simple. The first one is I'm creating a zip folder. That's all it's doing, is it's taking all of my artifacts and putting them in a zip to be sent off to App Center. And then the second one is doing just that. It's deploying to App Center. Um, and so when I do this, you'll see that the build version is just adhering to the exact same build number from the build itself. So my end user is constantly getting the latest version. So every time I commit a change to master, I get a new build and a new release with an updated um, patch version number, just like that, with only a few steps. And so now what we can do, here's the coolest part. App Center supports various distribution groups, with which Winnie will explain in more detail soon. But here you can see I'm signed in, so of course I can see my stuff. But if I go ahead and go into a browser where I'm not signed in, all of this is public. So you could go download this and launch the app right now using that URL from my GitHub repository. Everything will just work. And so we will do just that. I will download it. And then I'm going to hand it off to Winnie to go into a lot more uh, details into the power that App Center really provides. Awesome. Thanks, Daniel. So let me just go back to App Center. Um, so as Daniel mentioned, this is a public distribution group, which means when he kicked off the build and released this app build um, to these users, um, anyone can go to this link and download the app. Now we know a lot of you may be um, deploying your application to QA testers, beta testers. So in App Center, you can actually manage these different distribution groups by creating a group here. You'll see there's collaborators, we have one beta tester, and the public group with the link that anyone can access. You can invite beta testers or manage different groups by email, and the same flow applies, except this time those users will actually get an email notification saying, hey, there's a new release, check it out, um, here's a link to download it. And that way, only a subset of people can download those releases. If I go into the releases tab right here, I'll see all of the releases I've made. Um, I can even disable some release, so if there's a release with a bug or something that you just don't want users to be using anymore, I can actually disable that release like this, and then a user won't be able to see that in their install portal. Next, let's take a look at analytics. So Daniel didn't do anything to get this data. He just integrated the SDK. It was a few lines of code. And right off the bat, you'll see how many users you have, uh, monthly, weekly, daily. You can see some nice statistics on which devices your users are using. The country needs to be manually set with an SDK method, but then you'll see a graph of where your users are located. And then you can see the adoption rate and see if your users are actually adopting the latest version of your application. If you want some more customized analytics, you can also use our SDK to set a event. What this means is, let's say I want to know how many users press the equal button. I just track that as an event. And if I click on it, I get some more data, the percentage of user adoption, et cetera, things that can help me understand if my users are using the new feature of my app, if my users are enjoying it, you know, really what's going on here. The other thing you can do with analytics is you can actually export your data to Application Insights. So if you would like to do some more like querying, if you'd like to create custom dashboards, or even look at funnels, you can just export this raw data into App Insights and do all of that there. Application Insights is a very powerful tool, um, and App Center Analytics is meant to be more of kind of that out-of-the-box experience, very easy and quick to set up. Finally, we'll look at diagnostics. So here you'll see different uh, groups. We have crash groups and error groups. Crashes are unhandled exceptions, so those are when your app actually crashes, and the device logs will be saved onto the device and sent to App Center when your app is restarted. If I click into a crash group, you'll notice that um, there are different groups based on the version, uh, also the number of users affected, and the unique accounts. So that way I can prioritize which crashes I want to fix and which ones maybe I'll get to later. So if I click into a crash group, I'll see the stack trace. This will give me an idea of what's going on, why did my app crash. I'll also see the number of affected users, which OSs were affected, see if I can detect some trends from that. If I go into the reports tab, um, I can see the actual device reports. And in here, again, I can see the threads. I can also attach and see the events that I showed earlier in the analytics tab. So this allows you to see the breadcrumbs before a crash, so you can know exactly what your users are doing up until the app crashes. Under attachments, I can also attach a text file, a screenshot, so if you'd like more context to kind of help you understand the crash, this is a great way for you to do that. And last but not least, we also have a user ID feature. So you can attach a user ID to specific crash reports. So this can be a user email address, a user name, really whatever unique identifier you want. And that way, if a user comes to you and says, hey, like my app is crashing, can you help me find the reason why, I can easily search my crash logs and just type in that user ID and all those crashes will appear so you don't have to dig through all of them. I mentioned earlier we have two concepts. We have crashes and er errors. 
So these are handled errors where you know you know something might happen, so you throw try catch block around your code. So if I go into reports, I can see here. Okay, it looks like someone tried to divide by zero. That clearly is not how that works. Um, so now that we know a little bit more of what's going on, I'm gonna go back to the code and see if we can fix that. Um, go into here. Okay, so it looks like we are actually tracking this error, but we need to comment out this throw statement and uncomment out the exception message. We're cheating a little bit because it's a demo, but. And then I'm going to save this. If I click commit, say fixed error, I'm gonna commit and sync. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna automatically kick off another build and another release. Um, we're actually not gonna show just because of time, um, but if you go on the GitHub repo, you'll be able to see um, there's another release that just happened. So now we can go back to the slides. Um, so that was a quick overview of what you can do in App Center today. Um, here are some other things we're considering to better support Windows developers specifically. So as you might have noticed in the previous slides, App Center was originally focused on mobile developers, um, but we're really trying to see what we can do to help uh, make your lives easier. So we're gonna look into supporting automatic updates, which means your users no longer have to manually install every new release. Um, when they open the app, it'll just automatically update to the latest version so they don't have to go through that extra step. And those are, these are some other things that we're considering, um, not officially planned yet, but definitely find us on GitHub or Twitter and leave us a note if you have any feature requests or have any feedback for us. So you'll see like the bottom three links are all App Center specific. Um, you can find a link to our GitHub uh, public repo. This details our roadmap, what we're working on month to month. It includes feature requests, so definitely go in there, drop us a note, um, let us know what you think. Cool. Uh, so main takeaway, I'll put the other slide back up so I see people still taking pictures, but everything we just demoed you can go sign up for and do for free today. Um, so there's really no excuse not to have DevOps for any applications that's shipping in production. Otherwise, it's impossible for you to understand your end user experience and really make it a delight for them to use. Uh, so definitely try it out. Uh, we're open to feedback. We want to hear from you, so reach out to us if you encounter any issues or roadblocks. Um, other than that, if you want to learn a lot more about MSIX or other technologies related to deploying applications on Windows, here's a bunch of sessions that I am personally going, uh, going to go to because I think they're going to be great. And I would encourage you to do the same. And I see people taking pictures, so I'll give folks just a second. <laughs> And then the last slide, so I'll leave this slide up so people can take pictures. Uh, but please, please do submit session evaluations. I read through every single one of them, and I try to get a lot better, and I know Winnie does the same. We deliver this content for you. We love doing this, and we want to make sure that the next time we do it, it's even better. Uh, so we definitely want to hear your feedback. And the last thing I'll do, since we still have a minute, I don't think we actually launched the application that we downloaded. So oh, no, let's that. go do that. So just proof that this works. <laughs> if I go to my downloads folder, and what I encourage you to try and do is run this on any application or on any machine that does not have the .NET Core SDK or .NET Core runtime installed and watch it work anyways. Uh, it's really cool stuff with .NET Core and how you can do everything self-contained. One thing you will notice, first launch is a little slower because it's actually effectively installing .NET Core behind the scenes. Subsequent launches are faster. It doesn't do that every time. Um, but I, I mean, that's kind of the price you pay for having the entire runtime as a part of your application, which is still really mind-blowing to me. And then it'll launch. And I'll prove that, too. So this will take a second. So here you go. And then subsequent launch, it'll be like a half a second. And so if we crash it, you'll see this is the latest version. Oops. And now we can go back in here and see the analytics. I can see the latest version being used, which is 1.0.12. We get the events from the latest version. I think you can see that and then crashes. Crashes will take just a second. Let me relaunch it so it actually uploads the full crash. And there's usually about 30 seconds latency, but it's, it's still pretty quick. Uh, anyways, after this session, we'll be over here. If you have any questions for us, I'll refresh this a couple more times until it shows up. There we go, 35 yeah. seconds ago. <laughs> so you can see the, the exact time the crash was hit. There's a little bit of latency uploading and processing. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Thank you very much for joining. We really appreciate it.